Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first video in the Start From Within series. I'm excited to share with you today the core values exercise. If you're not familiar with who I am, hello, I'm Tamisha Williams. I'm an educational consultant who helps educators and school leaders recognize and address biases, manage emotions, navigate tension and conflict, and also promote equity and wellness within their school communities. I do this through a range of social and emotional learning services and other resources that allow my clients to cultivate a healthy emotional capacity. Thank you for joining me. This Start From Within series is going to highlight different tools and exercises that you can use to help you increase your own self-awareness. They will also help you cultivate an emotional, healthy, a healthy emotional capacity and promote equity and wellness within your own life. My goal is to share one video a month, so that's one tool or exercise a month. Um, and again, some of these tools will hopefully be familiar to you, but if not, then I'm excited to share something new with you. If you purchase the From Within workbook, then you will definitely recognize some of the exercises. The From Within workbook is a workbook I created that allows, that provides reflections, readings, and exercises for um, educators to deeply reflect on their personal identity and their cultural frame of reference. If you're interested in purchasing the From Within workbook, you can head on over to fromwithinworkbook.com. Otherwise, you do not need the workbook in order to participate in this particular exercise. So here's what you can expect in this video. The first is, what's a core value? We'll go over that. And then I'll talk to you about why this particular exercise could be useful in your life. I'll then walk you through the core values exercise and share some facilitation tips at the end. So let's begin. What is a core value? So core values are internal guidelines. We use them to guide how we act and how we make decisions. Core values can be conscious or unconscious and also guide how we experience alignment. I'll give you an example. One of my core values is wellness. So because I think about wellness consciously, I might be intentional about not scheduling late meetings so that I can get a good night's rest or perhaps I may prioritize my morning gym time over other commitments to, again, focus on my own health and wellness. When I think about um, times where I have unconsciously felt tension in different environments, I know that it's been because the environment itself, perhaps jobs, right, didn't prioritize wellness. Um, I found that myself or other employees were working long hours and didn't have a lot of time for ourself or for community care. That, again, had me experiencing some misalignment between my job and my core values. And it guided my actions and me leaving places, right? Where I did not feel like I could be physically or emotionally or mentally well in those um, spaces. So that's just one example of one of my core values and how I, again, used my knowledge of my core values to guide some of the decision-making in my life. All right, so why this exercise? Why is it important? This particular exercise is gonna help you to actually clarify and articulate your core values. You can do this exercise for your personal core values or for your professional core values. I recently did this exercise and came up with my company's core values. Um, it also makes it easier once you know your core values to assess if you are feeling in alignment with them in different situations or with different decisions that you're making. And then knowing your core values also helps you to notice some of the shifts that your core values may have over time. Um, core values don't have to be the same throughout your lifetime. And so by doing this exercise periodically, you can understand some of the shifts or growth that you've had. My core values, um, I first did this exercise around 2014, and I saw a shift when I did the exercise again last December. I'll share more about that shift a little bit later in the video. So now let's get to the exercise. All 
Right. So first, it's important to say that there are a lot of ways that you can reflect on your core values. Today, I'm going to be highlighting an exercise that I co-developed with education consultant Lori Cohen. And um, this particular core values exercise can be found at tinyurl.com slash my CVE. C for core, V for values, E for exercise. If you wanna head on over to that website now and grab your copy of the exercise, feel free. Um, it will be a Google doc prompting you to make your own copy and then you can type within and edit that document as you please. If you purchase the From Within workbook and you want to know how this particular exercise fits in with that, this exercise complements the Acknowledge Your Anchors and Buoys chapter, which is on page 47 through 50 of the From Within workbook. And again, if you're interested in grabbing that workbook, you're welcome to go to fromwithinworkbook.com and grab yourself a copy. Otherwise, I'm going to go on and go to the exercise on another screen. And I invite you again to follow along with me. All right, so here's our exercise. What you'll notice is that Lori and I have listed about 75-ish core values on this document. I'm going to go on and zoom in for you so that if you don't have the document open and you'd like to use some of these, you're welcome to. So to get started, I'm going to ask you to review the list of core values. This is not an exhaustive list, though. So if something comes up for you that's not on the list, write it down. Add it to the list yourself. What I typically do is read through every core value and then highlight the ones that stand out to me. I don't edit myself at this stage in the exercise. Feel free, highlight again all of them that come up for you. We're going to narrow our list down in the coming steps. So what I would encourage you to do now is pause the video and actually go through, read each of the core values and determine which ones stand out to you. We'll be back. All right, welcome back. If you did pause, congratulations, step one done. So now that you know which of the core values really stand out to you, I'm gonna have you narrow your list down to 10. 10 values that you consider really important that you can't live without in life. Write those down. If you are using our document, you can scroll down to page two and we have some spaces for you to write your values down there. If you're working in your own journal or perhaps you want to work in a more tactile way, I've known some folks who will write each core value on a different sticky note or a index card so that as they try to figure out the core values that really are standing out to them, they can maneuver those around. What I want you to do now is pause the video and narrow that first list down to 10 core values that really stand out to you and are most important to you. I'm going to go on and scroll down one second. Okay, I'm going to go on down and welcome to my life. This is my dog Nemo in the background. Nemo, leave it. He's trying to find a place for him to make his bed, even though he literally has one right next to me. If you pause the video, welcome back. We are gonna now move on to step three, our last part in this exercise. So now that you know which core values stand out to you, narrow your list one more time. This time you're gonna narrow it down to the three to five core values that really are core to you. So again, if you're following along on the document, here is your space to write down those three to five core values that are most important to you. If you're working in your journal or with your sticky notes or index cards, start to eliminate three to five, okay? This is where it gets challenging and hard. And what I would encourage you to do is consider what's most important for me at this moment or stage in my life and career. It's not about permanence. Your core values can shift over time, so you don't need to worry about, oh gosh, this one doesn't fit with this. Another thing that I've done is I will group sometimes the core values together that feel hard to disconnect. And sometimes then I will say to myself, well, Tamisha, this particular core value kind of fits in the, under the category of this. So it's not like I'm giving a core value away, but again, I am really finding ways to better articulate the core of how I'm feeling and what I wanna focus on. 
pause the video now and go on and do your last narrow. What are your three to five core values? All right, welcome back if you pause the video. Now, you did it. <laughs> what did you end up with? You have your core values. What are they? What are those core values that are really standing out to you in your life and career right now? How does it feel to read your core values? Let's head back on over to the presentation because I'd like to share with you um, some of my core values. All right, so when I first did this exercise in 2014, the core values that came up for me were creativity, equity, integrity, and then health and wellness. These weren't surprising to me. Creativity has always been really important in my life. I was at the time serving as an equity practitioner in schools, so equity was, of course, top of mind for me. And integrity was critical for me in terms of doing that work. I also found, though, that a lot of times it was really challenging to be there for others and do that job well, and then also focus on my health and wellness. So oftentimes I was feeling some tension with that particular core value. I redid this core value exercise in December of 2022, and the following core values came up for me, autonomy, community, and ease. Now there's a shift. <laughs> What's important to note though, is I feel like it's like a Venn diagram. I'm still in the center and the previous core values are still a part of me and really important to me. But at this stage in my life, autonomy, community, and ease are coming up the most. This also doesn't feel surprising to me. In summer of 2021, I launched my own consulting company. Part of that was to have more autonomy over my time, the type of work I did, who I did that work for, and the pace of my life. It was also really important for me to be able to spend more time with my family, my friends, and my greater community, hence community being a core value. And I also wanted to have a life that had more ease and flow to it, more leisure, if you will. And so I now can see that a lot of the decisions I've made since summer of 2021 have really been driven by these core values that I'm holding true to me right now. Again, what are your core values? And when you really pause and consider how they're showing up in your life, are you surprised? Do you feel alignment? Where might you feel some misalignment? So Lori and I are encouraging you to also find ways to visualize your core values. The two suggestions that we offer are a pie chart. So again, what you could do is say, hmm, you know, for me, autonomy is like 50%. That's the big one for me. I really need to feel a sense of autonomy in what I do. And when I think about ease, that's maybe 25%. You get to break it up how you want, but a pie chart may help you to articulate which values um, are feeling more abundant than others. Additionally, you could also do a pyramid visualization. And then the other one we give you is a possibility. <laughs> What's another way that you want to visualize your core values? The possibility I came up with was a collage. So I actually created digital collages for my business core values. My business core values were um, connection, well, not were, are connection, heart-centered, restorative, sustainability, and wellness. I took each of those words and created a separate collage for them on Canva. So this is one example of my digital collage I created. This is connection. You can see here that um, I connect with a lot of my clients on video. So if you look at the top left corner, you'll see folks on a Zoom screen. Um, next to that, you see folks holding hands. For me, connection is also about support. Next to that, you will see three plants. Um, and when I think about connection, I think about how it is important for us as humans to learn from one another. And that's critical to our growth. You see the plants are growing. Then um, if you go down to, uh, let's say the second row um, and you see the family eating together, again, connection for me is about the work we do being connected with each other that also helps us to be in greater community with our family, friends, and community members. The word thank you is critical that there is gratitude and love within the connection that we have. You see the individual here who is speaking and a lot of my work is done by doing workshops and presentations. 
And then if you go down to the third row, you'll see a team kind of standing over a project. When I think about connection, I often work with groups of educators or teams or whole divisions. And so I wanted to illustrate that connection. And then below that, you'll see sticky notes and chalk. And again, I love bringing visuals into the work I do, helping folks connect not just with words, but also the visuals and how those um, help them to better understand concepts. And last but not least, you see the woman at the bottom of the screen on her computer and surrounded by books. And that is also an important type of connection for me. The learning that I do, the books I'm reading, um, the scholarship that we are connecting with each other on. So that is the way I created my digital collage. I will actually do a video in the coming weeks that show you how to create your own digital collage. So stay tuned for that. So I've facilitated this exercise with small groups of educators, affinity groups also, and some group coaching sessions. So I'm gonna share with you some of the facilitation tips that have come up for me over the years. The first is allow ample time for reflection. This is not an exercise to rush people through. If folks don't have time to read through the suggested or through some of the suggested values, then they may feel rushed. And also they don't have time to consider are there core values that come up for me that aren't on this list? For each step, don't rush your participants. Create ample time for this exercise. I would also, again, create ample time for people to do this exercise in a way that's most valuable to them. Have note cards or sticky notes or scissors if people want to print out a list and cut them out. That's helpful, again, and um, people being able to reflect in a way that's helpful for them. And you may need time for different types of ways of doing this exercise. Additionally, encourage people to focus on, to focus on what's coming up for them at this stage in their life and career. This exercise is not about finding the right, wrong, or the perfect core value. It's helping people to understand that we can be flexible with ourselves, that eliminating, it's not about eliminating a core value, but it, it, it is about us being able to prioritize which core values are showing up for us the most or the ways in which we wanna show up in the world. And if they're feeling pulled that a particular core value isn't coming up for them, well then perhaps it needs to. But again, how can we help folks to release some of the pressure of being perfect around this exercise rather than what's showing up for you right now and encouraging them to do this exercise in a year and see where those shifts may be. The third tip I would give is to debrief with reflection prompts. I'm going to share with you some of the reflection prompts that I actually go through with my coaching clients. I have each of my coaching clients do the core values exercise in the beginning of our coaching relationship. Here are some of the prompts I use. You're of course welcome to come up with your own. How does it feel to read your core values? How do your actions reflect your core values? How do your leadership practices reflect your core values? Were you surprised that a particular core value emerged? In what ways are you feeling aligned or misaligned with your core values? What's an action you could take to be in greater alignment with your core values? And how might you use your core values to guide your next step with an upcoming decision? What are some additional reflection questions that come up for you? I'd actually encourage you to pause the video right now and to just answer a couple of these questions based on your own core values. All right, welcome back if you have paused the video. <laughs> so now you know what your core values are, what will you do with them? That's the question. When I'm feeling confused about a situation, a decision, or if I'm feeling um, tension within a particular circumstance, I will often return to my core values to help me take the actions um, and the way that I wanna show up in the world and the take actions that feel aligned with who I want to be in the world. So I encourage you over the next week to notice where your core values are showing up in your life. How are they surfacing? If you visualize your core values, please share those with me. Here are my social media platforms. I would love to see what you've created. Also use the hashtag start from within so that as we continue to go through the series, we can see some of the lessons or the work and the exercises and insights that each other's coming up with. 
again, I'm going to try to get up a video soon that shows you how to create the digital collage if you're interested in visualizing your core values in that way. But for now, that's all, folks. So until we meet again, take care, stay well, and start from within.